Lincoln Regular Basketball on WLCN 96.3 FM and streaming live on WLCNonline.com is brought to you by Shelter Insurance Agent Corey Leonard, AAA Window Siding and Doors, The Carpet House, Town and Country Bank, Lincoln IGA, Fifth Street Food Mart, Jason Schmidt and Channel Seeds, Friendship Manor, Rick Ham State Farm Insurance, Lincoln Heating and Cooling, Lincoln Printers, Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, Lincoln College, Realtor Nancy Cunningham at Brady Realtors, Stacy Family Pharmacy, Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois, Rao Incorporated, Schneider Chiropractic, Lincoln Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Christine Short, St. Clara's Manor, Eaton Corporation, Jim Examus Ford Lincoln, Bright Ideas Screen Printing and Embroidery, Headline Salon LLC, and by Family Custom Cleaners Laundry Tanning and U-Haul. Again, starters for Springfield, Henry Berry, Isaac Nelson, Keon Day, Trevor Mender, and Justin Pettis. And we'll get you all their particulars in just a moment. Railers are in their road green uniforms with red lettering trimmed in white, white numerals trimmed in red. The red, white, and green up the side of the uniform with the LR at the bottom of the short. Opening tip controlled by the Railers. They'll be moving left to right as we sit here high atop the balcony at Willard Dewey Gymnasium, and we certainly thank you for joining us here on this Friday evening. Looks like Springfield's opening in man. And if we are there anything like the, uh, the sophomore game as Grunder goes to the basket, nice. and he has it knocked away, but he's fouled, and Ben's going to go to the line shooting too quickly. And Josh, we saw a lot in the JV game. Uh, Springfield played a lot of man, very susceptible to the back door. Well, no hesitation. You know, Grunder steps in his first varsity start, just a sophomore, comes in the first possession. He, he grabs the ball on a left-handed dribble. Guy's guarding him way too close. He takes him off the dribble and gets to the basket for, uh, for two free throws. So it is a, uh, a great, uh, great start for Grunder, a great start for the Railers. Love to see that aggressiveness out of him. Ben's first free throw on the way is up and good. Second one for Grunder. That one's good as well. Sophomore gets the Railers out to an early 2 nothing lead. You know, that's always, a, always the uh, bad spot of being the sophomore coach. You normally don't get the best sophomores, and uh, Coach Greg has lost another one, it seems to be. <laughs> they dump it inside. Turnaround jumper from 14 is up and good. Yeah, Dave, their leading scorer, a second leading scorer in the league. Gets an easy jumper from the uh, free throw line right at uh, 15 feet. Hop across to Grunder who works across the timeline. Tries to get it down over the fly. Pass is batted up in the air and controlled by Pettis. Senators head down the other way. I tell you, Ben will, ben will quickly realize the, 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 the quickness from the sophomore level to the varsity along with the size and strength um, as he's got a lot of that in his game. But he quickly sees it as he gets the ball tipped away and stolen by Springfield. Uh, they're, they're a little bit quicker up here. Day over to Minder, back to Day. Top of the key, works to make a move. Down the lane, foul's going to be whistled on Bryson Kirby at the free throw line. It'll be before the shot. Oh, oh, they, that's, that's Isaiah. That'll be his first. So Isaiah and Bryson right there. 6.38 to go, tied at two. Into Pettis, turns, kicks back out to Nelson with the lefty three on the way, and that's good. 5-2, Springfield with their first lead of the evening. Hop across to Bowers, hands to Grunder. Hard to believe two of the starting five for the Railers two years ago were playing in eighth grade yeah. as Isaiah fires a long three. Back rim, no. High for the rebound is Pettis again for Springfield. Missed by Bowers there, who's been uh, one of the better in the last couple of weeks uh, scoring for the Railers. Minder at top of the key. 
Swings it right side to Nelson, watched by Kirby. Back on top today, now to Minder on the left side. Under six minutes to go, Senators with a 5-2 lead. Day down to Nelson. Nelson dumps it down today. In down the lane is Barry with the cut. The finger roll is good. Yeah, Springfield always starts out the game against the Railers really well, especially here at home. Uh, they usually start to fail off uh, at one point during the second half. Kirby finds an open Isaiah Bowers cutting down the lane who lays it off the glass. Yeah, Sam if good. they're going to press like this, we're going to pick this apart as soon as uh, the Railers start to pick it up a little bit as they just did there and got it to Isaiah going right down the basket. Ball knocked away from behind into the hands of K.J. Fry. 5.15 to go. Railers down 7-4. Hop on the dribble. Turns in the lane. Kicks in the corner to Isaiah. Isaiah the shot fake. Goes baseline. Lumps it down. And then out of bounds on the pass as he tried to get it to Bryson in the corner. So it'll be a turnover. Gives it back to Springfield. Yeah, not a good spot where Isaiah got to. Is on the baseline behind the bank board. Got stopped. When you really got to have an idea of something that's really going to work before you get down there. Because when you get down there, there's just not a lot of options. When you get along that baseline, you got to step out of bounds. You can throw it off the bank board. There's a bunch of different things, and Isaiah got caught with nowhere to go. Quick hands by the Railers as it's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Springfield. Five minutes even to go, first quarter. Railers down 7-4 as Minder looks to inbound. There's a lot of holding and uh, a lot of physical play in the sophomore game as the pass is thrown away. K.J. Fry is going to take it. Up, had it knocked away, blocked out of bounds. Nice defense by the Senators. It'll stay with the Railers. Yeah, but I like what uh, K.J. did there. Get to the basket. Make that official, either make that block or that uh, that foul call. And, uh, it, you know, it didn't go in the Railers' way, but we still got the ball back, and, and K.J. was uh, nice aggressive to the hoop. Bowers, top of the key, down the lane, contact. Before the shot, foul's going to go against Pettis. That'll be his first, second on the team. 4.35 to go. Railers will inbound on the baseline. It'll be Bryson Kirby with that responsibility. Gets it into Grunder. Grunder back on top to Hop. Right wing to Bryson. On top to Fry. KJ drives. Kicks over to Kirby. Back on top to Hop. Now to Grunder. Hop between the circles. 4-10 to go. Hop tried to go up for the shot. Kind of lost it. Nice. Was able to control. Get it down to Isaiah who laid it up and yeah, in. Yeah, nice pass by Hoppy. He got the ball tipped away as he was going up for about a 15-footer. Yeah, lost control of it, but was able to have enough control to get it down to... Uh, a cutting Bowers right along the baseline. Four minutes to go, halfway through quarter number one. Railers down 7-6. Mender over to Nelson, rises up for a three. That's no good. High for the rebound. Fighting for is going to be Fry and Barry. And see who the foul is going to be whistled on. That's going to be on Springfield going over the back of KJ. His first third team foul. Railer basketball this year brought to you by Eaton Corporation, Friendship Manor, and Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital. Railers looking to get the lead back this time down. Grunder out to hop. Leading score for the Railers. Came in at averaging 13 points a game. Grunder on the wing. High post to Bowers. Get it over to Bryson. Open three on the way. Left it short. Rebound to Minder. And then I think they're going to get a foul on Ben going in for the rebound. That'll be the first on the sophomore. Yeah, no problem there. Got Kirby open for a three. And he's been... Uh, been shooting the ball really well, um, and that time uh, Grunder got in there rebound, but you'd like to see it. You know, Ben getting in there, trying to scrap, trying to fight Claw for an offensive rebound. Got a foul with uh, a little too aggressive, but um, I think if you're coach, you like those kind of fouls. Day drives baseline off the glass. No, Kirby high for the rebound. Hop along the left side, gets it in the lane, kicks out to Grunder, over to Bryson. Railers will set up. Hop hands to KJ. KJ will drive in, 17-footer, in mm. and out. Rebound to good. Nelson. Looked good. We had a good view of that one. KJ, a nice two-dribble left-handed right at about uh, 15, 17 feet, and he's really good from that, that range and uh, in and out and couldn't get it to go. Three minutes to go, still 7-6, oh. and then a reach-in by Isaiah, and Isaiah has now picked up his second. And, Josh, you talked about the good looks. We had a great look into that call. That Look, Isaiah was clean. Yeah, that was a really clean clean steal and that problem with that it gives Isaiah two and he's had some trouble lately with fouls um, he's been been actually they gave out to 20 they give out to Grunder it looks like didn't they I don't think they've registered oh, there it is there we yeah go. yeah two on Bauer so 
Um, he's been really aggressive and, and a little too aggressive uh, late and lately here in the last week or two. Been, he's been saddled by some foul trouble. Garrett Isles into the lineup for the Railers. He replaces Bryson Kirby. But uh, just that quickly, a three on the way. That's going to be long, no good. Isaiah tracks down the rebound. Last touch. They're going to say last touch by the Railers. So it'll stay with Springfield. And as we were saying, as quickly as Kirby came out, I think Kirby went right back to the scorer's bench. And uh, i got to believe he's checking in for Bryson. Bryson will check in for Isaiah. So for the Railers, Fry, Kirby, Hop, Isles, and Grunder. 2.37 to go. Still stuck 7-6. Yeah, started out with a lot of scoring the <laughs> first couple minutes, and, and now there's been uh, nothing now for a couple minutes. 7-6. Springfield back on top. Nelson did a good job of saving it from going to the backcourt. For Springfield, coached by Preston Snar. For all the years, coached by Matt Reed. Lefty jumper on the way from about 15 is good for Nelson. He has five. It's a 9-6 Senator lead. Yeah, he can really score. He's left-handed and very quick, and he's hard to uh, hard to guard because he can go by you. He can shoot the threes. He's shown that already, and uh, the Railers have had trouble with him for several years now. Grunder, as we hit the two-minute mark with a 9-6 lead for the Senators, along with Josh Comnick, Jeff Benjamin with you. Grunder on the left side looking for some help. Gets it back on top to Fry. Swing it near side to Hop. Hop working against Day. Hands off to KJ Fry. Back to Garrett. Garrett top of the key finds KJ. Thought about it. Didn't take it. Pulls up from 15. That one's nice. good. Yeah, and, and you know when Bowers goes out, Jeff, it's the Railers really uh, go to only Hop to get to the basket. You know, he's about the only guy that can get to the basket playing against a man-to-man. Uh, -man, and uh, you, you lose Bowers for that. You just don't have another guy that can uh, keep, keep fighting and keep crashing and, and keep driving to the hoop and uh, you know Hop's going to have to do that a lot of that on his own here in the first half foul on the drive underneath is going to be whistled on Aaron Hop for Hoppy that's his first already 14 fouls on the Railers as they trail 9-8 80 seconds left in the first quarter yeah it looks like the Railers are slapping and hacking a lot instead of moving their feet tonight Nelson's three pack. is going to be no good that's going to be a foul on Barry that'll be his second and I believe that was Hop that uh, yeah. did a nice job good, of boxing out. Good position. Uh, I couldn't tell if it was Hop or Grunder, but uh, either one of those two down underneath and scrapping. So uh, the Railers would be nice to get a basket here. And as the uh, Senators are up 9-8 with a minute 14 left here in the first quarter. Henry Berry checks out. He has two fouls. So it's Blaine Keene, a 6'5 senior that checks in for Springfield. And he steps right in front of the pass and intercepts as it crosses the timeline. Well, not only do you lose that, that penetrator, you lose that other ball handler too when Bowers goes out, and, and especially against pressure, uh, some of the other railers aren't accustomed to handling it that much. Mender, top of the key three, no good back rim. KJ Fry comes down with the rebound. 50 seconds to go, railers trail 9-8. Do they hold 4-1? Garrett Isles on the dribble, working back and forth. Look to go back door, but Springfield sniffed that out. So the Railers pull it back out and get it back to Garrett between the circles. Approaching down to 30 seconds. Kirby had it knocked away and stolen. And then Bryson's going to be whistled for the foul. And for Bryson, that is his first 15 foul, 30 seconds to go. Just a little carelessness there. Well, uh, Kirby's stuck in the corner, still got his dribble. He's got to go to the basket or, or relieve some pressure. And when you don't... When you don't put any fear in the defender's eyes, when you just stand there with the ball and look to pass, 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 uh, they can really pressure you. And that time, uh, you know, Bryson had his dribble. 20 seconds to go. Springfield the ball up 9-8. And it looks like uh, Coach Snars instructed them they're going to simply play catch till we in the quarter. Day on the far side, in front of the Lincoln fans. Good turnout by Railer Nation here in Springfield. We're down to five, to four. Day is going to drive in, take it in. Had it rejected away by Hop, and that's where the first quarter ends. Into one, Senators the lead. It's Springfield nine, Lincoln eight. Back in 60 seconds with Lincoln Railer basketball. About to start the second quarter of action, and Josh looked back at the first game. Springfield's got to love their position. Obviously up nine eight. 
at the end of the first quarter back home at Roy S. Anderson, end of the first quarter, they were down 24-10 already. Yeah, yeah, they're in great position. We, we said this before, they play well, uh, especially to start the game uh, here at uh, here at their home gym. So uh, again, the Railers got it buckled up. They've uh, they've given uh, Nelson a few good looks and he's been able to drop them. We start the second quarter, Springfield with the basketball and a 9-8 lead. Into Keene at the free throw line, kicks it over on the left side to Nelson. Nelson drives it back out to Minder. Over the right side to Day. You know, that's gonna give some defenses some trouble when you've got Day on one wing and Nelson on another. Right, and they got it in the middle right there and Nelson. out to Nelson. Nelson's three is no good. Another rebound comes down to the Railers. It's KJ Fry. Another miss from Nelson. Railers first opportunity here in quarter number two. Leading score for the Railers in this one, Isaiah Bowers. He has four, but he's on the bench with two fouls. Garrett, top of the key, four, three, left it way short. Rebound's nice. going to be tracked down by Garrett yeah. on the left side. Good job by Garrett. Those shooters always know where they're going to miss, and that time Hop pulls up 12. It. No good. Rebound high is Springfield. That's Marquise Johnson. Under seven minutes to go. Keen. Back on top to Nelson Minder. Keen baseline jumper in and out. Rebound to Kirby. Now, I'll tell you, the Railers have looked aggressive on the boards, though, Jeff. Uh, when we go up and get them, they have been uh, with a little muscle tonight, you know, with a little, uh, like, I want the basketball. Uh, those guards, uh, I think coaches put it in their minds, they're going to have to start rebounding, and when you go up and rebound, you better be tough and physical. Hop on the right side. Looks to go right by Keen. The reverse try, no good. Hit the underside of the rim, and Springfield heads the other way as Day crosses the timeline on the dribble. 6.15 to go. Yep, still there at 9-8, Senators. Mender directing traffic now on the near side to Day. Isles comes out on him. Right side to Nelson. Dump it down to Johnson. Back out to Mender. Good ball movement. Finds the left side three. No good from Day. Rebound to the Railers. Under six minutes to go. We at the top of the hour at eight o'clock. Maybe that'll be uh, just in time for some scoring here for the Railers. Fry underneath to Hop. Hop turns from 10. No good, gets his own rebound, tips it out to Grunder. Right side, Kirby, Need three. Need yes. Got it. And again, uh, an offensive rebound. Hop gets it, kicks it to Grunder. Grunder at the free throw line, uh, kicks it out to Kirby. and. Uh, Kirby's able to drain the three, so a nice possession there for the Railers as they got a nice shot for Hop. Hop just un unable still yet to get anything really to go. He's been off the last couple games. Railers with the lead now at 11-9. That's three, number 29 for Bryson Kirby on the season. Keen in the lane, tipped back out, tipped away by Isles. Minder from 15, left it short again. Hop with another rebound. Hop looks ahead to an open Kirby, back out to Fry. Look at Garrett's open here on the wing. They're yelling shooter at Isles, I would say so, after they hit, <laughs> after he hit 10 on you in the last game. Isles on the right side to Fry. Swing it out to Garrett. On the way. Off no good. Rebound to Mender for the Senators. Back. Mender. Timeout taken by Springfield. Just to 30. So we will keep it here. 4.39 to go in the first half. Lincoln on top, 11-9. That gives us time to tell you that we want to say thanks to Rick Ham, your State Farm Insurance agent, the Carpet House, and Lincoln IGA for their sponsorship of Lincoln Railer Basketball. Yeah, we're 11-9, uh, so the Railers have uh, have got the start. we got the lead now, the first lead for the Railers in the game. But again, it's been a tough score for both teams. Haven't shot the ball real well uh, for uh, for either team. And, and uh, the Railers have gotten a few good shots been, uh, for Hop. But it would be nice to get Hop going, Jeff. He's been... Uh, been off the last couple of games and uh, you know he does so many other things for the Railers and of course you got to have him out there because he rebounds well he passes well he's right now with Bowers out there one of the only guys that can get to the basket but um, his uh, his shots and his uh, you know right around that 10 feet area where he's re usually really good has uh, not been able to get him to go last two games Hop has had eight in each one 439 to go in quarter number two Lincoln with an 11-9 advantage. Day over to Nelson. Nelson picked up his dribble, gets it to Day on top of the key. Watch by Isles. They get it down to Pettis. Pettis, a big guy down yeah, there. Yeah, big boy. And, and Grunder doesn't doesn't move a, a muscle. 
inside, little floater up over everybody. That is Nelson. He's got seven, and we're tied at 11. Well, nice move, and they got it into Pettis, as you said, was a nice, uh, nice size as he, he's just a junior, but a uh, big boy underneath. Says he got him only less than six foot, but he's, he's bigger a, than it's six It's a big foot. six foot. Yeah. <laughs> Halfway through the quarter, tied at 11. Isles, Kirby, Hop, Grunder, and Fry on the floor for your Railers, looking for win number 12 on the season, looking to go six and six in conference play. Garrett on top to KJ. Right side to Bryson, spots for three and nice. hits again. Yeah, they run that double screen on the on the low block uh, for Kirby. They usually run that, uh, that play for him, and he's uh, a pretty good shooter coming off that double screen on the baseline. So good job by the Railers of uh, executing that play, and a nice job by Kirby hitting the big three. Mender over to Nelson. He's open for three. Left it short, rebound tipped out, and it's going to be on the Railers. I'm not sure. Big grunder. I did on KJ, I think. Right, 20. Let's see, yep, they do get it on KJ. That's his first sixth on the Railers, Josh. So next foul for Lincoln. And Springfield will be shooting free throws. Yeah, I think it was on a box out trying to get uh, Pettis, Justin Pettis, uh, the big boy underneath. I, I still got him listed. At, I, think the, I think the roster is messed up. He's, uh, he's way bigger than six foot. 14-11, Railers with the advantage. Bryson Kirby with a couple threes here in the quarter. Dump it to Day, turns, rolls off no good. Rebound fight, Pettis underneath, still trying to fight it. Grunder comes it's, out of there with it. But it's Grunder who reached down and took it away. KJ on the left wing, back out to Hop. 2.45 to go, Railers hang on to that three point lead. And a foul out high is gonna be whistled on Day. His first, fifth on the team. Bryson Kirby will inbound in front of the uh, Railer faithful. I tell you, it seems to be uh, a little tacky as far as the calls out on the perimeter, but when you get them down low, the refs are really letting them, uh, letting them play. Hop, still looking, turns one way, and then another foul is going to be whistled on Day. That's his second quickly. Both teams now with 16 fouls. Day's picked up his second. Two thirty-six left here in half number one. Both teams will be in the bonus on the uh, on the next foul, so it'll be nice for the Railers to get there and get some easy baskets from the free throw line. Kirby inbounds to Hop. Hop's going to gonna drive in, takes it yeah, up. That's gets an undercut, by, man. Yeah, by the I was going to say. And a blocking oh, foul going to be whistled on to Sean Kirk. Yeah, that's call. his first. I like this official. Hop goes to the line shooting two. And Josh job. Shepard, the folks just listening, uh, explain what Hoppy did and what they called. Well, he got into the lane, and not only was the guy too far underneath the rim, but he slid underneath Hop while he was going up for the layup. And uh, the, the official explained it to the bench. I don't know that he has to explain it to the guy that's keeping fouls, the, tr uh, the track of the fouls, but he did anyway. And he did a good job. He said he slid underneath, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, you can't slide underneath, and for one, the guy was too far underneath the rim. You can't take a charge when you're standing underneath the rim. Hop hits them both. It's now 16-11. Minder turns in the lane, finds Barry. Has it swatted away from behind by Kirby. Nice defense by Bryson. It's got to be Kirby's first block of the season, for sure. <laughs> yeah, but we'll hear about it. Yeah. Good job by Bryson. Railers 4-4 four four from the line already tonight. Came in shooting 80% as a team. Pettis, Barry, little eight-footer in the lane. No, there's Bryson playing big in the lane with another rebound. I'll tell you... I Grunder doesn't move an inch down there. Pettis has probably got two feet or, uh, you know, with two or three inches on him and probably a, a good several pounds, and uh, Grunder doesn't move a muscle. Railers mishandle it and lose it. Kirk comes out of there with it for Springfield. Two minutes to go. Railers up 16-11. Nelson looks to drive, but Hot cuts off the baseline. In the lane, floater is good from Barry. 16-13, Railer lead down to three. Minute 45 to go. Hop ahead to Grunder. Fry trying to direct some traffic. Gets it to Grunder, top of the key. Grunder looks to go right by Pettis, does so. Shot it a little hard. Rebound down to Springfield.
Dump it out to Kirk. My coach uh, asking for the official to uh, <laughs> blow his whistle on the other end. <laughs> Little floater by Kirk. That's no good. Rebound to Grunder. Yeah, Ben did a good job of getting to the basket. Uh, that's part of that difference between sophomore and, and varsity. He probably gets by that guy in a sophomore game. The varsity, you hang and claw, and the guy's a little bit stronger. He can't quite get around him. And uh, he'll, he'll learn from that. Under a minute, Fry drives in, pulls back out now to Grunder. Railers up 16-13, right in that gray area. Do you hold for one or yeah. do you try and look for a good one? I think if you if you can, it's you know you, you'd love to. With a 16 to 13 lead, uh, but uh, you know Springfield plays a pressuring man. It's not a great man, but it's it's pressurized anyways, and it can cause you, especially when you get late in the in a quarter like they are late in the half, where you're tired. The guys haven't come off the floor for a while. Your mind can get a little lackadaisical and you can throw the ball away, but it uh, looks like Coach will elect to try and hold it here for one as he's got it down 20 seconds now. Hand off to Hop. Railers up 16-13. Hop hands to Garrett at the timeline. Now over to Fry on the far wing. High post, nice catch by Hop. Down to eight to seven. Drives over, dumps it over to Ben. Ben shot it a little too hard. Springfield a chance. Nelson fires one up. It's on the way. Hits the rim, and that's where we end our half. Halftime, Lincoln with the lead. It's Lincoln 16, Springfield 13. We'll be back with our halftime in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. <laughs> 